What's up YouTube community, Bernd here, welcome back to another video lesson. Today we continue with mastering the vitally important topic of memorizing and locating all the triads across the neck, with special focus on the minor triads this time. As we discussed last week, this is the fundamental skill that will suddenly allow you to find chord voicings all across the neck and you will be able to optimize the spacing of your chord riffs, as we will check out with the second practical example, of course that will allow you to play faster and more accurate. So without further ado, let's get started right away. So last week we checked out all the major triads across the neck and some practical examples concerning that. If you did not watch this lesson already, please make sure to go back and check it out since it will serve as the foundation for what we are building upon right now. Working with triads fast and effectively is the number one skill I currently need in all my professional studio and live jobs. On stage I mainly play for the Austrian pop act Zeiler und Speer. Aside from myself there are two more guitar players in the band, one more electric guitar player and one acoustic guitar player and frontman and I'm switching back and forth between electric and acoustic guitar. Aside from that we also have some keyboard sections played by the other electric guitar player and on some special occasions we also perform with string or brass sections. What I'm getting at here is that there's a lot of stuff going on harmonically on stage with relatively simple songs. So it will get really messy as soon as three guitar players or even more musicians in the entire ensemble are played the exact same basic chords in the exact same frequency range. So I have to be really quick and know my way around the fretboard in the studio when I'm booked to work on the live arrangements or on the studio records for this project. Often the producer will tell me what you're playing is pretty cool but it doesn't work in this frequency range. So for example in the key of C minor there's any kind of arpeggiated chord pattern for example. It might clash with uh, what the acoustic guitar is already playing or with the keyboard or organ part that is recorded already. And then the producer might say you have to move it up higher on the fretboard and that's when you have to be quick if you don't want to be fired. And most of my students are only familiar with moving up the exact same pattern one octave on the same strings and that won't get you very far. You have to be much more original. So let's dive into it right now and check out all the A minor triads across the neck for all the different string groups we discussed last time. And of course I also prepared a more practical example once again where I'm playing a very basic chord riff including major and minor chords this time and we are rearranging it by only using triads. Here's the first example, the A minor triads across the neck. So as we know from last time, I'm actually just playing the same three notes over and over again, the root note minor third and perfect fifth. Last time with the major triads I was playing the root note major third and perfect fifth. So that essentially means only one note is changing this time, which is great news for us. So if you really put in the work last week, learning all the major triads in the different positions and on the different string groups, you just have to turn the major third into a minor third with every single voicing. Once again, if you want the full lesson experience, head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Bernd. There you can download the PDF tabs and chord sheets, the guitar profiles for this lesson, and I also made sure to upload some practice backing tracks. It's much more effective to work with the practice backing tracks that I uploaded for you over there, since you can also focus on your timing and the correct switching between the triads with this exercise. And having a special backing track for every exercise that I upload here on YouTube will allow you to stay organized with your practice plan. So to start out, once again, we have to find all the roots across the neck. So every single A in order to form our triads. If you still struggle with note location and fretboard visualization in general, make sure to check out the lesson I posted on that a couple of months ago. There we check out some helpful tricks like the octave triangle and more. So I have my A right here on the fifth fret of the low E string. Here's the octave interval on the seventh fret of the D string. Of course, also on the fifth fret of the high E string, on the 10th fret of the B string, here on the 2nd fret, of course, here the open A string and so on. And then we are adding the minor 3rd C and the perfect 5th E to all of those roots. So first of all we have A right here, the root, C, the minor 3rd, and E, the perfect 5th. 
that would be the most common triad, I think. Starting with the root, third and fifth. And as we said, it gets really interesting as soon as we don't start with the root note as the bottom note. With the next triad, we start with the minor third C, play the perfect fifth E, and then we have A, the root, on top of the voicing. And that to me immediately sounds much more interesting, just like we discussed last time, than playing the standard inversion. So next time when you're playing a minor chord, please focus on not always starting with the root note on the bottom, switch it up a little bit. And then for the next one, we have A here on the 12th fret of the A string, and we're placing the perfect fifth on the bottom, and playing the minor third on top. So those are all the three voicings for the first string group. Once again, root note on the bottom, then we have minor third, perfect fifth and root, and in the end we have perfect fifth, root note, minor third. And the great news of course is that these three voicings are repeated in a different order right now for the next string group, for the A, D, string group. We're starting off with our A right here on the second fret of the G string. So we're playing C, D minor third, E the perfect fifth and A the root on top, which is the exact same voicing we had here. Same notes, same octave, in the same order. Up next we have A right here on the 7th fret of the D string. So we are playing this voicing once again with the perfect 5th on the bottom followed by the root and the minor 3rd just like we played it right here. And then for the last one of course we have A here on the 12th fret of the A string. We are playing the most popular triad with root as the bass note, minor third, perfect fifth. So if we take a short break right here, we can compare it to the major triads we looked at last week. As you know, we just have to change one note right here. We have to turn the minor third into a major third to get to the major triad. This knowledge will save you a lot of time since you don't have to look at major and minor triads as this divided thing you have to study. You actually only have to know the structure. And after that you can also continue forming diminished chords or diminished triads I should say by just lowering the perfect fifth to a diminished fifth or augmented triads by raising the perfect fifth of major to an augmented fifth. So once you learn the major and minor triads, you can also move on to the diminished and augmented triads. But we will not look too much into that for this lesson since I want you to get the major and minor triads down first. Then we have to take the B string into account once again since the tuning of our guitar is not completely symmetrical here, the voicings look a little bit different. So once again we're starting with A right here on the 2nd fret of the G string and we're playing perfect 5th root minor 3rd. Next A is right here on the 7th fret of the D string. So we're playing root note minor 3rd perfect 5th. The next A is right here on the 10th fret, so we're playing minor third, perfect fifth, and the root on top. So for this string group, once again, which is actually the top of the classic A minor chord, that already sounds much more interesting than just playing 
basic uh, A minor chords, for example, we are working with when we're playing pop songs or ballads or whatever you like to play. Those are the exact same notes I'm playing, but I'm not just always placing the root note on the bottom the inversions it just sounds much more interesting and already kind of suspenseful and then we move to the last string group to the G B and an E string group we're starting once again with A on the second fret of the G string and we need the open A string right here essentially once again just the top with the E string included of the standard A minor voicing so this is what it looks like one octave higher. I'm sure you came across this one already, since it features the root on bottom once again. This is a very common voicing for minor. Up next, we have A on top, the root, then the perfect fifth, and on bottom we have the minor third. And I'm sure you're familiar with the last triad for today. Here we have the root sandwiched between the perfect fifth and minor third. And this is actually the top of the very common D minor chord. So in the case of A minor, that is the last triad for today. So please take some time to memorize all the minor triads and especially focus on using the ones that are not starting out with the root note as the bottom or bass note. Once again, I also want to show you a practical example of what you can do in the future with your knowledge about triads. For this one, I'm once again just playing very basic chords, major and minor chords, but I'm only thinking of the E string as my reference for the root notes. So when I do that, to jump around quite a lot across the fretboard and that will make it a little bit different to speed things up and it also doesn't really sound very interesting it's very boring and predictable so here's the practical example i'm playing a very basic chord riff mixing major and minor chords and then i'm using my knowledge about the triads to make the spacing more economic and the sound a little bit more interesting So for this example I was playing A minor, F major, D minor, C major, G major, A minor once again. And as you could see I had to travel all across the fretboard right here. And that can be cool if it's intentional, if the slides are part of the sound. But most of the time it's just a lack of knowledge about locating chords correctly that results in riffs like that. So let's say that our producer told us he doesn't like the way uh, this riff is sounding, either because of all the slides or because of the low frequencies and that we should play it in a higher section of the fretboard. So what I could immediately do is take the last triad we looked at with A here on the 10th fret of the B string and start out right here. So I'm using this triad for A minor. Up next we have F major. So I'm thinking about the next F right here, and that would be here on the 10th fret of the G string. So I could play So actually just one note is changing right here, which sounds pretty cool. Much more interesting than Also much more economic and easy to play. Up next I have D minor, which is a pretty big jump right here from the first to the tenth fret. What I could do right here is locate my uh, nearest D, that would be right here on the tenth fret of the high E string. So I could This voicing we just learned with the minor triads. So which 
sounds pretty cool. And then the next chord I was playing was C major. So I have to move from D minor to C major. Once again, I'm just looking for the next C here. And that's fortunately right here on the 10th fret of the D string. So I could play this voicing from last week, the very popular major triad with the root on the bottom, major third and perfect fifth. So once again, the entire thing, A minor, F major, D minor, C major. And then from C major, I have to move to the final part to G major, A minor. So we stopped right here at C major. And the next G is right here. I'm already playing G right here. So I can choose this voicing for G major. And then I don't want to use the exact same voicing for A minor again to make it a bit more interesting. So I could move down right here. Play this popular voicing once again, root, minor third, perfect fifth. So let's hear the comparison once again. And here's our triad arrangement. I hope that you agree with me right here. The triads sound much cooler, much more original, and it's actually a, a lot easier to play because of the spacing of the chords. As I said, the PDF tabs, standard notation, and guitar profiles for what I just played are online on my Patreon page. With those files, it's a little bit easier to reconstruct my way of thinking when I turned this basic chord riff into this trial section. So I really hope that you enjoyed these two intense weeks dedicated to triads. As I said, this is the most important knowledge you will need in the future to construct your own complex chords. You can add sevenths to them, you can extend them even beyond that with chord extensions like the 9th, 11th or 13th. You can also turn them into very interesting unique arpeggios. But first of all, you really need to internalize the major and minor triads in all the positions on all the string groups across the neck. So please make sure to dedicate at least 10 to 15 minutes every day to mastering the triads across the neck in a couple of months it will come very very natural and you won't ever be embarrassed again when somebody asks you to play this kind of chord patterns or arpeggiated chords in a higher section or different section of the fretboard. In the end make sure to subscribe to never miss a guitar lesson again and to join this YouTube community. Leave a like in case you enjoyed this video or learned something new, that always means a lot to me, or a comment in case you have any questions that I could answer for you. I really hope you have a lot of fun practicing all this, I will see you soon, all the best until then.